Okay, let's start with our first class. So often our hearts do not feel a burden for the lost soul. Have you ever been there? Um, I know you probably right now do have a burden for the lost because you're here tonight. But have you ever felt in your life that, that maybe you just didn't have a burden um, for those who are lost in the world? And our jobs take up a lot of our time, sometimes financial problems, children's problems, illnesses in the family. Fear sometimes keeps us from wanting to reach out because of what people will think about us, or maybe we are afraid that we'll say something wrong. And so tonight we're going to talk about, first and foremost, we need to have the burden put upon us from Jesus. This isn't something we can conjure up um, on us. Jesus is the one who gives us the burden for lost souls. So prayer is the key. If, if, if you want a greater burden on your heart for those who are not in um, good fellowship with Jesus, praying for this burden that Jesus will put upon your heart will be the key to um, increasing that burden. And I'd like to read you this quote. If you are in communion with Christ, you will place his estimate upon every human being. You will feel for others the same deep love that Christ has felt for you. Then you will be able to win, not drive, but to attract, not repulse, those for whom he died. None would ever have been brought back to God if Christ had not made a personal effort for them. And it is by this personal work that we can rescue souls. When you see those who are going down to death, you will not rest in quiet indifference and ease. The greater their sin and the deeper their misery, the more earnest and tender will be your efforts for their recovery. You will discern the need of those who are suffering, who have been sinning against God and who are oppressed with the burden of guilt. Your heart will go out in sympathy for them and you will reach out to them a helping hand. In the arms of your faith and love, you will bring them to Christ. You will watch over and encourage them and your sympathy and your confidence will make it hard for them to fall from their steadfastness. What I really love about this quote, it says, you will, you will, you will. You notice that all the way through it, you will. This is a promise. This is a promise that God gives to each of us that if we pray for this, we will have this desire in our hearts. And Galatians gives us, there's two promises I pulled out of the scriptures for us tonight. Galatians 6, 9 says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I love that promise. Because as we go forward in faith, sharing, you know, God's love and his truth, if we are faith, if we keep at it, we and not grow weary, we will reap a harvest. Second Thessalonians tells us the same thing. As for the rest of you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, never get tired of doing good. That is what Jesus wants us to be encouraged, to never get tired of this work. If you feel tired and burnout, it's because your love cup is low and you need to go to Jesus. You need to come to him and you need to be filled because we cannot conjure up love within us, guys. We have a fallen nature. We only have the love of Jesus because he's in us. And so when we have that love in us, then we can share it with others. So if you feel depleted, if you feel that you can't, you're, you just don't have that burden anymore, that's the time to stop and get on your knees and plead with God for that burden. And this is what it says in historical sketches, page 147. One soul who embraced the truth was regarded of more value than mountain, mountains of gold. We wept and rejoiced and could hardly, scarcely sleep. Mountains of gold, guys. That's how one person in God's eyes is so much more valuable. Just wait, there's more. Mountains of gold. 
The salvation of souls is of a greater consequence in the whole world. One soul saved to live throughout the ages of eternity to praise God in the Lamb is of more value than millions in money. Wealth sinks into insignificance when compared with the worth of souls from whom Christ died. More value than millions. We saw mountains of gold. Now we see millions of dollars. Jerusalem has been the child of his care. And as a tender father mourns over a wayward son, so Jesus wept over the beloved city. How can I give thee up? How can I see thee devoted to destruction? Must I let thee go to fill up the cup of thine iniquity? One soul is of such value that in comparison with it, worlds sink into insignificance. And this is from the Desire of Ages, page 126. Worlds, guys, not just one world, not just our worlds, but all the worlds that God has created sink into insignificance from one, one soul. The frailest human being may be elevated, ennobled, refined, and sanctified by the grace of God. This is the reason God values men and those who are workers together with God, who are filled with divine compassion, will see and estimate men in the same way that God sees and estimates them. Whatever may be the nationality of, or color, whatever may be the social condition, the missionary for God will look upon all men as the purchase of the blood of Christ and will understand that there is no caste with God. No one is to be looked upon with indifference or to be regarded as unimportant for every soul has been purchased with an infinite price, infinite price. The value of a soul, who can estimate it? Would you know it's worth? Go to Gethsemane and there watch, watch with Christ through those hours of anguish when he sweat as it were great drops of blood. Look upon the savior uplifted on the cross Hear the despairing cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Look upon the wounded head, the pierced side, the marred feet. Remember that Christ risked all for our redemption. Heaven itself was imperiled at the foot of the cross. Remembering that for one sinner, Christ would have laid down his life. You may estimate the value of a soul. And this comes from Christ Object Lessons, page 196. So Jesus's life is the most valuable thing in the universe he gave up for us. So as we look at these, these quotes that kind of take us through a incremental amount of how God values us, he sees, first of all, we're more valuable than mountains of gold and we're more valuable than the whole world. And then it takes it a step further, the world's an infinite price, and then the life of Christ. Can we see how valuable we are to God? I, I, I just, it blows my mind when I think about how one individual, doesn't matter who that individual is, what? they value, God that values not happening them right now. more than we value them. We must have God's eyes to see them as he does. So now I thought it would be really wonderful if we could spend some time in dedicating ourselves and asking for that burden. And Mickey's going to lead us in prayer this evening for that. Okay, thank you, Cindy. Uh, as I pray, uh, what I'd like for you to do is, uh, I think uh, this calls for um, intentionality. Uh, I think we need to be very intentional about what we're doing. Uh, and, and so I'd like for you to think about um, whatever it is going on in your life right now, as busy as your, your life is, and all the troubles that have uh, occurred this past year and what's going on in your home and within yourself. Think about whatever, whatever it is that can prevent you from uh, completing this course and, and giving it uh, your full commitment. Uh, anything that would interfere with um, you uh, achieving the, the, the goals that uh, Jesus has for you that he's planted in your heart. So think about those right now 
and then uh, pray in your heart, and then I will pray audibly. So let's bow our head for a moment of uh, silence as we think about those things, and then and then I will pray. So now, Father, we thank you first for this opportunity. We thank you for Stephen and, uh, and Cindy who have committed their lives and others who are supporting them, who are committing their lives this time that they have. They could be doing other things, but they, they are dedicating their life, their time to helping us to uh, learn more about how we can witness and, um, and share uh, Christ with others. So first, thank you for them. Uh, I pray that you would give them good health, uh, be in their hearts and their minds as they present this, uh, this series, this course uh, to us, that they would give us everything that you have uh, uh, that you think that we need to need, that uh, you think that we need uh, for this time. So thank you for them. And Father, now I wanna thank you for all those who are participating and, and those who uh, just can't be here tonight, but will uh, join us uh, later. Uh, Lord, you know the things that are going on in our hearts and our minds. Uh, we live in some terrible times, uh, but Lord, you know, in these terrible times, there are people who are asking, they're looking, they're pleading for help, for hope. There are people who are asking for Bible studies. Um, there's been times when we had to go to them, but Lord, now people are coming to us, uh, but Lord, we need to be prepared. So this is a time now that we should prepare ourselves, and by participating in this study and others like Arise, uh, we can learn more and, and hone our skills uh, and hone our testimony so that when people come to us, we can be ready and give them that hope and, and, um, and the faith that they need. Uh, Father, uh, so bless our commitment. Help us be committed. Uh, whatever it is that could block us from completing the course or interfere with us from completely paying attention and uh, perhaps missing something, Lord, I pray that you would uh, take that out of our, our lives. Help us to dedicate this time and then from, from here on out, help us to not only just learn it, but practice what we've learned. Uh, so Father, I just wanna thank you. I wanna thank you for hearing this prayer. And I thank you for answering and we look forward to uh, the fruits of our labor. For we ask these favors in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Mickey. Now, it is time for me to turn over the time to my husband and he's going to share with us tonight um, his screen and his PowerPoint on how to, how to learn how to, to develop our one to two minute testimony. Steve, are you there? There you go. All right, is that showing on the screen? Yes. Okay. Okay. I wanted to start with the text. It's from Revelation 12, verse 11, where it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Now, who would the they be that overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Well, the they is kind of answered at the end of verse 11. Those that did not love their lives more than they, uh, more than they love Jesus. But it also comes from verse 10, where it talks about those that are accused by Satan day and night before God's throne. So... <clears throat> I think that this is really a very powerful uh, idea that uh, Satan can be overcome by our testimony. Every single one of you has a powerful testimony. And the reason why it's powerful is because uh, it came as a result of the blood of the lamb, but it's also powerful because it's your story. And who can argue with your story? You could give a Bible study, you could uh, explain a verse, or you could give your opinion about just anything on earth, and they're all, those are all things that somebody could argue with. But who can argue with your testimony? And 
especially a spiritual testimony that comes as a result of the blood of the lamb, that's extraordinarily powerful in someone else's life. So we have this uh, little exercise that uh, we think is also very powerful, which is um, actually developing a written two minute testimony. Now, does anybody have any guesses as to why uh, it's important to write it down and condense it to two minutes? Just unmute yourself if you wanna answer, Steve. To be able to share it in a concise way. Okay, good answer. I like that. Any others? Um, if you write it down, you'll remember it. Okay, good. Any other ideas? Also, as far as the two minutes so that you don't get carried away rambling on and it's a little too much for folks. Ah, yeah, very good. I like that. Anybody else? Okay, for most of you, I'm sure at some point have shared your testimony. Have you had the experience that maybe when you were done sharing, you thought, I wonder if that went a little on too long. It turns out it's actually difficult to condense our story into two minutes. And so the purpose of the exercise is to teach us how to get our story into a very concise little nutshell. You can always expand a two minute testimony should the Holy Spirit uh, impress you that you have more time to share. But you will find, I believe, if you get adept at sharing your testimony in two minutes, you will have more opportunities to share it than what you perhaps have experienced in the past. So that's our challenge to you is to develop a two minute testimony and practice it until you can actually share your testimony within two minutes. You have a unique experience and uh, in your coming to Christ and your learning about him, you had a life experience before you came to Christ. And then as you came to Christ, uh, there were changes in your life and so that testimony can be very powerful, especially because God will make divine appointments for you to share it with people who need to hear your specific life experience. Uh, the suggestion is that uh, you divide your testimony up into what was your life like before? And then how did you receive Christ? And then how is your life different as a result of receiving Christ? So we would suggest that before you start doing this, ask God to guide your thoughts, help you to write down words and to be concise. Uh, write as if you're sharing this with just one person and keep it short. I missed that three, should be two. Two minutes gives you enough time to explain your experience and include a clear presentation of the gospel. Consider using a theme. Um, it might be that uh, your theme might be how God uh, uh, filled a hole in your life that you had before. It might be that uh, you were overemphasizing your career track or overemphasizing relationships and God came and filled those spaces in your heart. Um, and this can actually lead to you developing several different testimonies. Um, and th this, this is a, there's a strong Bible, uh, a strong um, a storehouse of Bible examples of testimonies being shared. For example, in Acts 22, where Paul shared his testimony in the temple at Jerusalem. And in 23, he shared his testimony with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And in 26, shared his testimony with King Agrippa. And interestingly, Paul utilizes this before, how, and after format. So we have a clear Bible example 
for this. In the putting it on paper, uh, splitting it into these different sections, before you receive Christ, how you receive Christ, and after you receive Christ, I think you'll find to be helpful. And uh, include an introduction, and then some kind of a conclusion. Decide what is the most important aspect of your testimony, but don't be too explicit or sensational about your life, especially about your life before you met Christ. Sometimes unwittingly people can glorify sin in the, in the sharing of their, of their testimony instead of glorifying Christ. Um, be concise. Arrange events, ideas, thoughts in a logical order. Uh, develop these thoughts and ideas into sentences and then tie them together in a meaningful way. What things were most important to you before you knew Christ? Uh, what, uh, what aspect of your selfishness <laughs> was what uh, your life and your attentions revolved around? Um, was it money, marriage, career, relationships, status, uh, education, whatever it was? And why were these things important? What basic need were you attempting to fulfill? And how did you go about trying to satisfy that need? So some tips involved would be start at a time in your life in which, uh, uh, which relates to your experience with Christ. And remember, you're not trying to outline a complete biography of your life from childhood. Um, you're just trying to, it can even be in a single sentence or a couple of sentences, convey kind of what your life was like before you met, met Christ. Uh, that shouldn't be the weight part. Uh, in fact, uh, count the uh, words that you're using. If you're doing this in a word processor and you get done with it, take a look at how much of it is spent on your, on your uh, life before Christ and make sure that's uh, not getting a preponderance of the attention. Some of you may not have had a, uh, a very specific experience in terms of a conversion. Some of you, it might have happened during your childhood, but don't be afraid of that and don't be uh, ashamed of that uh, because there will be other people that have had that very same experience that can identify with your specific uh, your specific experience. From Testimonies, Volume 5, page 82, it says, real conversion is a decided change of feelings and motives. It is a virtual taking leave of worldly connections, a hastening from their spiritual atmosphere, a withdrawing from the controlling power of their thoughts, opinions, and influences. So it's clear what is conversion, but it can occur over a period of time. And it, uh, it can happen in somebody's life that really wasn't uh, immersed in the world. Um, maybe somebody came up as a, kind of had a very for, uh, traditional Christian experience, but somewhere along the line, there, there's a, a conversion in your thoughts and feelings toward, you kind of fall in love with Christ. So that's your, that could be your testimony. Um, how you received Christ. When did you first hear the message of Christ? And what was your reaction? Uh, when did you first begin to feel positive toward the gospel? And why did that happen? Why did you make the decision to trust Christ? And how did you specifically do that? So in answering these questions, you're seeking to identify specifically the process that brought you to the point of receiving Christ. And that's the climax of your testimony. <clears throat> it's important to emphasize that uh, this was an act of your will. And then after you receive Christ, how did Christ specifically satisfy the basic need you stated in the before section? 
and what changes have occurred in your life as a result? And how do you know Christ is in your life? Some more tips. Be practical in describing the changes in your life since you became a Christian. Describe how God is helping you learn how to trust him more. And give examples of ways you have changed or principles you have discovered in God's word and yet how you have applied them in your daily life. Now, I can say that these are tips that <laughs> you may or may not include. If you try to include every one of these tips in detail, you're not going to be able to do it in a two-minute testimony. But again, the two-minute testimony isn't the only testimony you're going to share. It's an exercise that actually will help you to organize your longer testimonies. I mean, you may have a testimony that might last an hour that you share with somebody. But going through this experience of developing a two-minute one is actually going to improve your longer one. Uh, be sure to mention that you're not perfect now. You still have many problems every day, but Christ enables you to face them realistically and to solve them in God's way. You're not perfect but you are forgiven and you're progressing. Some practical areas that Christ has changed might include relationships, goals, priorities, good and bad habits, attitudes, the atmosphere of your home, your marriage, your job performance, so on and so forth. By way of writing the introduction, you could have different versions of your, uh, of your testimony. One that you might use when you're in a group setting and one that you might use when you're sharing it with individuals. But the suggestion that we have is that you should memorize word for word this two minute testimony. And obviously as you share it uh, and get experience with sharing it, you're not gonna do it from, from memory, but I think the, the exercise is good about getting the anchor points firmly into your mind. When you're sharing your testimony with a group, you might start with some kind of a quote or maybe a startling question or perhaps an illustration. Uh, an example might be one of the richest men in the world, John D. Rockefeller was once asked, how much money would it take to satisfy you? Smiling, he quickly replied, just a little more. Of course, you, you may that may or may not be interesting to you, but for somebody whose life revolved around acquiring things, this might be a good lead in to their testimony. Um, another example might be bringing up children in this world can be difficult. And apart from one factor, I would be lost as to knowing how to raise mine. May I share my story with you? Or before I knew Jesus, I had everything a man could possibly want, yet I was extremely unhappy. You mind if I briefly share that story with you? Your conclusion should be a summary statement of one or two sentences referring back to your initial basic need and the fact that Christ now fills that need. An example might be, I made this decision over 30 years ago, and it was the most important decision I have ever made. During this time, I've had a growing sense of purpose, peace, and fulfillment based upon my personal relationship with Jesus Christ instead of my successes in life. Remember, your goal is to explain what Christ has done in your life and to stimulate them to think about their own lives. But we're not here to preach. That's not the idea of a testimony. Leave your audience with a, a challenging thought. Keep in mind that they will generally comment on the last thing you say. For instance, what would stand in your way of giving your heart to Jesus? Or... Would you like to learn more about this Jesus who changed my life? Uh, another suggestion is to avoid tacking a scripture verse onto the end of your testimony. It's much better to put it somewhere in the before or how or after portion, uh, whatever portion it relates best in. Uh, do consider writing more than one draft. We encourage you to share it with the group as we go through this training. Uh, for valuable practice and for uh, constructive criticism from the group. Do rehearse your testimony until you're able to give it naturally. And 
we think it's really helpful to avoid Christian lingo. Uh, when you are sharing your testimony to a secular mindset, there may not be a familiarity with things that we kind of take for granted that everybody understands for things like uh, saved and converted and convicted and born again and things like that. Now, this next sentence is something that for some reason is, uh, I find a lot of people trip up over when we've asked people to develop their testimonies. And even though we say this every single time we ask this, we still have people talking about how they became uh, convicted about Adventism, and that's their testimony. And uh, I certainly don't want to discredit that kind of testimony. There's a time and place for it. But what we're after is for you to be able to share a testimony with somebody that needs to know Christ. And they're not going to be able to relate to your testimony about how you became an Adventist if they don't even know Christ. And so we think that that's um, something we'd really like to see you focus on is how you came to know Jesus and focus on that testimony. And there's certainly no harm in developing a testimony about how you became an Adventist, but that's not the one that we're asking that you share with the group. It's about when you personally uh, met Jesus. Uh, another thing we find over and over again, when people, when we ask people to share the testimony, about 80% of the time, they're more than two minutes long, which just shows how difficult it is to cram everything into a two minute testimony. But the, the purpose of the exercise, I think you'll find to be really, um, uh, you'll really reap the fruit of it if you, if you really try your best to, uh, uh, to stick that goalpost of doing it within two minutes. Don't be too wordy. Have a clear point. Have direction to your words. Uh, don't put too much emphasis on how bad you were. And don't overutilize glittering generalities such as wonderful and amazing. And, uh, you know, just be careful of the superlatives. Don't speak critically or negatively about any other group or individual. Don't mention churches or denominations by name. Be realistic. Share how Christ enables you to walk through your problems rather than removing them from your life. If you've taken the time to prepare a personal short testimony that God can give you opportunities to share it, pray for divine appointments. So I'm going to turn it back over to Cindy. Does any, before I do that, does anybody have any questions? Go ahead and unmute yourself if you do. All right, very good. Well, thank you for listening. Thank you, Steve. That was a great, great presentation on how to do this. It isn't as easy as, as like Steve said, as it sounds to do. Um, uh, so I really, really encourage you, though, to um, Cindy. take the time and effort to sit down, pray, write it out, practice on your spouse or a, someone else, a friend. Um, and then I would love it if we had volunteers each week share their two minute testimony before we begin the next class. So somebody wants to say, say something. Oops, sorry. Oh, sure. Go ahead, Karen. Somebody wants to say somebody wants to say something. Who does? I'm Me. not sure. <laughs> Connie. Oh, go ahead. I wish that Steve would give us his two-minute testimony. <laughs> you know, I was going to work on my two-minute two minute testimony to share with you tonight. I'll be glad to do that in a subsequent meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I was going to actually be prepared tonight to do that, and I just didn't get a chance to get that done because it's been a while since I have done this myself. Um, but it, it isn't hard to do. Depending on the situation you're in, I would recommend that you write several different ones. Um, for instance, when I'm speaking with 
um, mothers that have are having a difficult time with a child. I have a testimony about my child that I like to share. If you have, um, you know, someone you're talking to that is just so unhappy in their marriage, then I have a little testimony I like to share with that because at one point I was really unhappy and how Jesus changed me and how, so there's different, there's different testimonies that we need to be prepared to share as the, as the, you know, the circumstances shows up. And again, it's important not to just go off the cuff with that, to be prepared for each kind of different situation that you feel the Lord is calling you to prepare for, because we can go on and on. And I have a tendency to do that. I, guys, I'm a, I'm a chatty person. Um, and that can be just such a turnoff. So you really, really, really want to learn how to do this and, and leave the, the person you're talking to hungry for more, not like, oh, will she ever shut up kind of thing, you know? So make it sweet to the point and make it at the end something that they want to know more about and work on that. The Lord will help you. And um, it, I would love it if there were, uh, how many of us are on tonight? Does anybody have a total for me? At least 25. Okay. So let's, um, and it, it may grow as we go through this. So nine times, at least we need three people each evening to share their two minute, two minute testimony. So who is brave enough to share their two minute testimony with us next week? I need three it. volunteers. Inez, thank you. Okay. Inez has volunteered. Any other volunteers, please speak up because I can't see you all at the moment. Inez? I'll share mine. This is Mick. Okay, Mick. Awesome. Mick is going to Inez. Anyone else? I need one more volunteer. I'll share mine. Who is saying that? Pierre? Yes. Okay, Pierre. Awesome. You three very brave souls next week. In your handout is all this information we just went over. So um, it, I sent email that if you did not get the handouts, let me know and get me your email so I can send it to you. And you got my phone number, text me. Um, I, my phone number is at the top of the chat. Here, I'll put it in again so everyone can see it. Just put, so you don't have to scroll all the way at the end of the chat. But here's my phone number, take note of it. Um, and text me, call me, let me know if you didn't get all the handouts because that, that's gonna be helpful as you prepare this testimony. Um, great, you know guys, it's only seven o'clock. I didn't know exactly how long we'd take tonight, but you know, it's always better to, to end on not going too long, right? <laughs> Believe you me, in the, as in the upcoming courses, we may have, we may have to um, definitely use the whole hour and a half. But tonight, I just wanted to um, encourage all of you to really start praying, preparing your testimony, and praying that God will give you divine appointments. Because right now, as we start this endeavor, Satan is going to want to stop it. So please keep, in, keep us all together in prayer. Let's all pray for each other. And that we would um, be preparing this testimony so that God will give us divine appointments to share them. And as we do this, we're going to find that We'll have more Bible studies than we have time to do. Wouldn't that be a good problem? It would be a good problem to have. Well. Janine, yeah. let me yes. add something. Since, Absolutely, uh, Steve. Go right ahead. Janine had kind of cued me up to go quickly through that. Uh, but now she's uh, saying we have a little bit more time. So let me just add something, if you don't mind me doing so. Um, one of the things that is extremely extraordinarily powerful about having a two minute testimony is first of all, you're going to have a lot more opportunities to share a two minute testimony than you are a 15 minute testimony. So that's, that's one thing. But the second thing is you'll find it's a tremendous way to gauge somebody's personal interest 
And what I found is the sharing of my testimony has been a prelude to being able to develop a, uh, a Bible study with somebody that bridges that gap so well. It's just, it's just amazing how God will use the experience he's taken you through to bind yourself to another heart and that person trust you enough to want to share the scriptures with them. So um, that's, that's the additional thing I wanted to share. Thanks, Steve. And, and please, if there's anyone else that you know that would like to join our group in, in this training, um, get me their email, give them my number, get, get me their email so that I can send them, I'll send them these, these handouts we did tonight and a copy of the recording. I've recorded this and I'll be uploading it to my YouTube channel and I'll be sending you all the link and so that you can review it and also share it with anyone that you think would be interested in um, doing that. But please be sure to have them listen to this first before they join us next Sunday, if they can. So if there's any other questions or comments or anything, please unmute yourself and share. And we'll have, uh, Steve, would you give us closing prayer after, after we give everybody a minute to share? Sure. Thank you, Lonnie. Lonnie says, great class. She wishes more people could be part of this training. Thank you, Lonnie. Praise God. We do too. So invite anyone you want to come. Well, I just want to thank you all for taking your time out of your schedule to uh, do this with us. And uh, it's really appreciated. And may God continue to use you. Thank you, Mick. Was that Mick? I can't always see everybody. Was that you, Mickey, talking? As Pierre. Oh, Pierre. Okay, Pierre. Thank you, Pierre, very much. And just a little sneak preview for next week. Um, if you didn't get your class outline, we will be talking about how important personal preparation is and also the science of soul winning and how Jesus is our, our master soul winner. He, we will look at his life and learn to model him. And we're going to study because we're told in the spirit of prophecy that soul winning is a science and we must study it. If it's a science, we must study it. So that will be our classes next week. And make sure you look at the outline, the syllabus, and I will be sending you again um, handouts for next week. So look for those. Hopefully I'll try to get them to you by Friday in your inbox. Okay. Any other, anything else anyone wants to share? And I'm not sure who 404778 is, but it says, yes, indeed, we've appreciated your console. We're glad you're here. Um, please let us know your name, who that is. Who, who are you? Well, maybe you want to be anonymous. That's OK. Oh, it's Connie. OK, great, Connie. <laughs> glad you and, and Bill could be on tonight. And uh, we're just grateful to meet all of you. It's so much fun to meet people all around the Atlanta area and beyond. We've got some people from North Carolina on tonight too. So we're just grateful to meet all of you. So without further ado, Steve, would you have closing prayer for us? Sure, let's pray together. Father in heaven, what a uh, encouraging thing it is. There are those who want to be used up for the cause of Christ. Yeah. And uh, Father, we're all aware that our burdens aren't what they should be. So we pray as we proceed through these lessons that you would hear our prayer, our desire to have a greater burden for the lost around us. And that that desire would supersede anything of this world that it would be consuming to us for the result will be the army that you promised and the church militant that you promised. We know this isn't done through our power, but through the power of your Holy Spirit. So we plead for your spirit to be upon us. 
as we prepare and as we learn, as we experience you, we just pray that uh, whatever is necessary for us, for you to answer our prayer that you would accomplish. And we submit ourselves to that voluntarily. This is our prayer tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.